Hello, just going to check the sound here. Good afternoon to anyone who's uh, turned up. Okay, I think we can get started now. Uh, actually, let's find one more person. Uh, welcome to the um oh hello hi hider 75 nice to see you there thank you for joining us today uh this is the uh a few days after the announcement of um magic the gatherings core 2021 um <laughs> uh core 2021 uh set um and we are going to open some packs and have a look at the cool cards that we've got inside. Um, it's been a long time since I've uh, tried to build a deck in Magic or anything like that. So uh, if you know better than me, uh, it'd be great if you were uh, hopped in and uh, and told me what I'm doing wrong or uh, whether I've got a good one, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, we've got two. What have we got? What have we got to open up here? Um, we have got. Two whole boxes of pre-release packs here. Uh, there, there are something like twelve packs in each, something like that. Is it six packs in each? It's, I think it's six packs in each, and uh, a foil, and some other bits and bobs. And we've got some other um, packs as they go. Uh, yeah, just normal boosters, really. Yeah, uh, they look pretty good to me. Okay, so for those of you who um, <laughs> for, for those of you who don't know who I am, well, I think you all do. Uh, I'm my name's Chris Eggett. I'm the editor of Tabletop Gamer magazine, this fine magazine that just happens to be here in front of us. There we go. Um, so uh, we're a magazine all about uh, board games, card games, RPGs, that sort of thing, uh, and uh, it's full of reviews, all the latest stuff, and that kind of thing. Um, yeah. So shall we? Shall we get started? Bit nervous opening these actually. So maybe we should start with the core pack. I've also got this Ikora set, um, which was a pre release set that I uh, had intended to stream opening um, <laughs> a month ago or so. Um, and I'd never, I didn't quite get around to it because of some sort of pandemic or something like that. Uh, so we'll open that as well. Uh, oh, and I've also got this. We can look at this as well. Now this is, I don't know if you can see that very well there. This is the uh, commander deck. Uh, I think this uses mostly um, black uh, mana. Um, and uh, yeah, it look, looks pretty sweet. So we'll open that as well. So where do we start? Do we start on the core decks like the uh, core set um, boxes like this? I think we have to, right? Okay. So 
we get a foil in each of these, I believe, a guaranteed one. We get a nice coloured, um, I think this is a health health counter. I think that's right. So that's quite a nice one there. I'm actually not sure how varied and rare these things are. Is this is this a good looking one? Okay, cool. I will put that to the side for a moment. Okay. Here's what we've got in here. We've got some cards suggesting that we should sign up to something online. So we'll put that out of the way. Uh, we have a foil, which I'm going to hide, and we have a few uh, very crinkly looking packs here, uh, which hopefully sound as good to you as they do to me. Um, so I think a normal a normal magic deck is 60 cards or something like that. Um, so, uh, oh, is that, so Hyder, that's a, uh, a pretty standard pretty standard one of these uh, health counter yeah do you do you get rare ones that's my question really do we do we, do we get rare um, health counters it's been such a long time I'm sure that when I used to play magic it was little um, like pretend glass beads that we used for health I think I think that's right or I might be thinking of um, the Pokemon trading card game actually but uh, um, for those of you who are paying attention any sort of attention to my face um uh i'm very sorry it's just it's an incredibly hot day so i may just melt in the corner over here um okay should we look at our first foil which is uh, a grim tutor uh, so let's get this out of here okay so the Grim Tutor is a sorcery. There's a bit of, I don't know if you can see the sort of nice uh, metallics on it and things like that. I think it looks kind of cool, like the edgings on the book and stuff like that. Um, so this is a sorcery. Uh, search your library for a card and put that card into your hand and then shuffle your library. You lose three life. So minor, minor cost to you there, really. Um, but uh, I guess it's just for controlling your deck um, and the kind of things you can play out. As I say, this is... Um, it's been a long time since I've played Magic. Okay, let's just, uh, I guess we'll just start opening these things. Now, what I need is someone to, if they see that I've opened a really good one, is to um, uh, shout in the chat and we'll go back and talk about it. Um, equally, if I'm getting really excited about, because uh, the, the thing about this new set and the thing that drew my attention, um, was that they they have uh, they're introducing dogs, you know? Uh, so dogs now have effects that, are, that help other dogs, you know. Um, you know. Dogs that stick together. I'm not sure if there's a, there's a phrase in that actually. Um, okay, so we've got a spined megadon, which looks cool, uh, which is hexproof. Yeah, so it's a hexproof, uh, which I guess is. Uh, See, so I'm going to have to be reminded of really basic um, magic mechanics now, aren't I? I'm assuming you can kind of curse your cards. No? Okay. So, Blood Glutton. Uh, life drinks are kind of like life still mechanic there. Um, yeah, that seems good. Seems pretty straightforward. 4 3. Okay. So that's the same, that uses the same mana type as the Grim Tutor. So that seems like, you know, we might be able to use the same, you know, I could build a, I could potentially build a deck around that, right? Okay, Return to Nature. Okay, it's like a multi, a multi-use sort of this, like a utility um, destruction spell. Um, as exile target from a graveyard, I'm assuming that means to, uh, to drop a, um, uh, drop a creature from uh, being rotated back in in some way because obviously you can pull some some creatures from your graveyard um burn bright uh a creature's control get two plus uh attack until the end of turn cancel this is the uh twitter card see now i think i used to have this card is this, is this a classic? Am I actually, because I think they reprinted some cards for this, um, 
uh, for this release. So I think we're probably going to see a few cards that I'm used to. Uh, secure the scene. Uh, exit target non-land permanent. So is that a anything that's on the on the board that uh, we can uh, that stays out? I think. Uh -huh. Creature tokens. Forgotten sentinel. Uh huh. Pretty standard stuff. Oh, see that one. That last one said flying on it, and I've completely forgotten how flying works. So is that something like you can only flying creatures can only attack other flying creatures? Is that right? Um, or you can sort of you know magic them down, I guess. Uh, let me just see if I can improve the. There we go. That's better. Feet of resistance looks nice. Eliminate. See, this is so I naturally gravitate to this because of the art. I just think this is probably a better card, right? Yes, this is like a destroy low cost creature, right? That's a bit of control. I like that. there that does something like if one or more one plus one counters would be placed on the creature you control that many plus one plus one counters are put on that creature instead oh here we go Yeah, so this is, I like this sort of thing as well, where you can sort of ramp up the size of a creature. You know, it just um, suggests potentially. Um, oh, Hyder, thank you. So uh, the way flying works is that uh, flying creatures, which uh, we saw over... Where did we see it? Oh, here we go, the uh, enchantment. Yeah, which was, could, could mean our, maybe our Hydra could take off or something. Um uh, or maybe not, no, because I think that only applies to certain creatures. But it means that um, you, you do get creatures with uh, reach that can block um, those flying creatures as well. So not everything has to be flying. It doesn't have to be you know, uh, a, a, a um, Air Force uh, army split. Um, so yeah, I like I like this sort of creature because it's got the potential to be huge and silly. Uh, I'm assume, and I assume not any deck that uses it. I assume, that, I assume that's actually a rubbish card that's just meant, it's meant to be fun, but... Uh, uh, but is only really circumstantially useful. Oh, so this is a legendary creature. Is that good? So it's flying. Go track to the crown scourge. Uh, the crown scourge can't attack unless you control four or more artifacts, which seems uh, like quite a high price, actually, isn't it? Ah, but it's a dragon that creates treasure, so that's thematic, at least. Cool. So that's a gold one. So that, I think that means that's quite good, right? So we'll put that, we'll put that, to, that one to the side because that seems good. Uh, some land. Winds, uh, a wind scarred crag. Uh -huh. So this is, this is a mana generation. This is a multi mana generation. So you could. Um, I can't remember what the. Um, I'm going to say. Uh, oh, that was a rare card, was it? This is, so this is a rare one in the same way as Grim, the Grim Tutor was. So that's cool. See, what I should do is really have the um, a browser open here and an auction site, right? That's a joke. That's a joke. Um, okay. Uh, and then we've got a token creature here. I mean, I don't get that, actually. Is that just the thing they check in all these packs? Yeah? Or is that is that just like a... Um, Uh, is that just something? Is that, is that like a normal thing, or is that a? See, that looks like to me, it's there to just make sure you can run a run a deck out of this um, uh, this pack, right? That's cool. That's cool. Okay, that's a good way to do it as well. Anyway, so because the, the point of this set, I think, is that they're trying to get more people um, back into it because it is uh, uh, almost um, baroque uh, in terms of what. Uh, in terms of uh, on 
Most of the time it's on the back of the tip card. What is the tip card? You're going to have to tell me what the tip card is. Unless you mean it's a card with tips of how to play, which I guess I understand it then. Um, why, uh, what's that? Whip and clean? I think that says. Um, right, I'm having trouble actually opening the pack here, which is quite embarrassing. So, is there a technique to this? Here we go, that's a bit better. Do that off, off camera. Okay. So what's that? There you go, there's another uh, token creature. See, I like this one more, it's a zombie. Okay. Cool. Okay. Life goes on. Uh, so another like life still effect. Uh, crash through. Oh, it's trample, so it knocks uh, knocks the effect on um, from the creature you hit to the um, the hero, uh, which might be the wrong terminology. The summoner, your opponent, anyway. Uh, the person you're trying to beat up. Uh, read the ties. Again, another utility card. Draw up to three cards. See, that seems good. Maybe that's a good uh, combination to have those those blue cards that are, with uh, have some sort of utility aspects, and then uh, the, the black cards for um, sort of control. Cool. Yes, yeah, so you can spend. You can spend some mana, I think, on this one to get, get to boost that. Truffles now. Look at this good pig. Isn't that a good pig? Look at that. Oh, when he enters the battlefield, he uh, oh, he gained four life. That's yeah, that seems quite good as well, actually. Bone pit brute. Interesting cyclops chap there. Hey, that looks like that looks like a good one. Yeah, so that's a uh, make someone else weak sort of card. More damage, just direct damage cards there. Uh, basic dwarf soldier there. Uh, here's some artifacts. Now, how do artifacts work? You have to, you have to remind me of that. Probably Hyder will have to remind me of that, uh, as my um, my current chat based uh, uh, guide. So you, I assume you maybe you attach this to a creature, uh, and then it gives it a bonus. The art's very nice though, a bit paladin-y though. You know, there's a, a kind of a thing in like fancy stuff where you know like paladins and um, you know like high elves and that kind of stuff. You know, they're kind of uh, they're a bit snooty. You know, it's not they're uh, they're not the most interesting um, characters to play as uh, naturally. Uh, naturally move away from them. Um, okay, got another one here. Uh, riddle form. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, you may have riddle form become a 3-3 three, three sphinx creature with flying in addition to its other types until the end of turn. That's interesting. So that, does that morph a creature? Doesn't it? Shipwreck Dowser. Very good. I like that a lot. Prowess, whenever you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets 1-1 one, one to the end of turn. So again, this is another um, building up your character thing. I think this is our rare instant. Choose one or more. Counter target spell, counter target activated or triggered ability, return target non-land permanent to its creature's hand, create a token that is a copy of target creature you control, target player draws a card. I mean, that's a lot of stuff. This is, I mean, this is... Um, what people should replace the uh, uh, galaxy brain meme with this this thing? Ragged Highlands, right? Got some more uh, land based there, land based stuff there to get some mana. Okay, so first question for you all: um, Is this too slow, or shall we? Shall I pick up the pace a little bit for us? Okay. Rookie mistake. Oh, good. This is see. So what I like, what I like about cards like this is it. Um, 
artifacts like equipment, but they're permanent. Okay, so so quite unremarkable. Does that mean that? Um, so does that mean that artifacts uh, don't they don't get destroyed with the creature? Is that right? This kind of card I like because it offers us the uh, opportunity to um, uh, imagine a very messy battle. Um, I know there's sort of I know high end card games like this um, that you uh, uh, I've just seen a message come through that's um, throwing me off there. Um, in a lot of these high end card games, we we, we end up thinking that um, we we end up just doing maths against each other, uh, whereas this sort of stuff is kind of what you get into, um, uh, and get into like an idea of like okay so this is a spell or an instant that to the end of the turn the target creature gets plus two and another target gets minus two right um so uh it just it's just this thing of saying um this is happening now and it's a confusing part of um like kung fu panda or something like that um oh interesting okay again this is another a choice card, a bit of a utility card. So, um, death touch or life link. So, can someone tell me what death touch is? So, this is a, a card that gives a creature um, death touch or a life link. So that's a nice utility card. I'm going to put that on my maybe put in an actual deck um, card. Uh, reach. Okay, so this is, this is one of the ones that. So this is a. This can catch you a low flying uh, griffins, that sort of thing, right? It's got reach. Oh, and it is okay. So in a draw deck, that would be very good. Where you've got lots of draw cards, you'd get um, extra uh, defense. Now, would that defense work on your uh, on your off turn as well? For roar of the bitten. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's a sort of a uh, werewolf curse, right? Target opponent sacrifices a creature with flying. Interesting. I'm not sure how that's going to work, actually. So I say to the, my opponent, you need to kill one of your creatures that flies. Okay, so death touch is kind of... Um, in, in other games, it might be called something like poison, right? You know, so it's like a one... It doesn't matter the size or the health or anything like that. You just end up uh, killing the creature, right? That's Hyder there has just told me there's nothing worse than coming up against a 1-1 one, one death touch that you can't remove. And that's why you need one of those, whatever it spells, that those removal spells. Scry, yep, good, that's a nice draw card. Yep, another draw card, that's good. Celestial Enforcer, tap target creature, activate this ability only if you control a creature with flying. Okay, so that gains me one, um, I'm going to say vanilla uh, flavoured mana. When Daybait Charger enters the battlefield, target creature gets 2 2 into another turn. Okay, so another uh, buff card. Finishing Blow. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Or have we done this one already? I think we must have done. Still, I like it. Can I think of Augur? Is that say that's a silver one? So that's a not a ra not a rare, but like a, a medium rare. Is that right? Oh, I like this as well. Kinetic Augur's power is equal to the number of uh, instant and sorcery cards in your graveyard. So if you spent a load of instant and sorcery cards, you can maybe one shot your opponent with this. If you've done a lot of them, um, I like that. So I'm going to put that aside. I think that's a good one to think about building something around. That sounds funny. Uncommon. He's an uncommon card. Very good. Uh, another tree folk. Uh, Elf assassin. The twin blade assassin. Cool. OK. 
Okay, so this is our rare for the pack. Uh, permanency control gain hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. That seems good. Uh, cool. Basic land. Lovely. Straight up mana. See, I um, this is I think this is very fancy because I think the last time I played this, I was maybe fifteen or something like that, and um, I think I think this looks like a million times more um, fancy than, <laughs> than it did back then. Okay, very good. Now, there's probably some professionals out there who think that I should be doing something like separating the lands out or putting them in their uh, various different like mana mana types. But we won't be doing that. We could do that later. I'm just going to drink some water. I do apologize for that. Mm. Okay. Okay, so this is a... Return up to two target creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, I like that. So we're gonna, I'm gonna put that in my I like pile. Yeah. There's a few of those over here. And that guy, we like that guy, didn't we? Oh, we like that as well. Okay, sorry, I'm just uh, making making sure I've got some a favourites pile over here. Uh, right, dinosaur. See, dinosaur's good. Cool. This is a death touch thing. So this is killing killing big creatures with little creatures. Uh, good value, but uh, probably not going to win you the game. I don't think. A lot of control stuff. Uh, two, two, and turn, end of turn. Okay, that's if you spend the mana to set it on fire. Nice looking crab, probably delicious, I would say. Oh, okay, so there's an artifact, uh, which if you got spent for, tap, is that right? Sacrifice Silent Dart and deals three damage to target creature. Okay. Strike damage is fine. Defiant Strike, yeah. Roaming Ghost Light. When Roaming Ghost Light enters the battlefield, return up to one target non spirit creature to its owner's hand. Seems cool. Bit of dragon fire there. Straightforward, I think. More flying cats. That's a flying cat, isn't it? Here we go. Angelic Ascension. Uh, Sanctum of Stone Fangs. Legendary enchantment. Shrine. At the beginning of your pre-combat main phase, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of shrines you control. I mean, how many shrines can I control? Yeah, is that is that a viable um, uh, way, a thing to build your deck around, having a lot of shrines? But in fact, actually, just coming back to this, it doesn't matter, does it? Because if you're just doing control, you can just bleed your opponent out slowly, can't you? So actually, that's quite a nice, even if you just had one, because this would count for itself, I imagine. Um, you could just have this chipping away at them and they'd have to expend resources to remove it and that sort of stuff. I like it. I like it. Okay, so you've got a sacrifice creature to get this one out. But it is a 5-5, five five, which I think is pretty big. I think that's bigger than some of the legendaries we had. Uh, human rogue. Um... Now, Flash. You're gonna have to, someone's going to have to tell me what Flash is. Oh, we've got a shiny one. Can you see the shiny one there? Look at that. So this is a, I'm going to say, Onaki Ogre. Um, the ogres you know are nothing like the Onaki, possessing both intellect and industry, but have brute strength without being brutish. Uh, I suppose he does look a bit like a fancy ogre. It seems pretty straightforward there, right? Uh, so that's, he's a common, right? That's a, that's a common shiny that I've got there. It's kind of cool. Okay. Yep, got some land. I will put that somewhere separate now. And this is a goblin wizard. 
I quite like him actually. Uh, play at, at an instant speed so creatures with flash can be played on your opponent's turn. Oh, I see. Right, so this one here, which is the rare from our pack, um, is is flash. Uh, whenever Thieves could enforce or another rogue enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent mills two cards. So let's just burn two cards. What is your graveyard straight away, I guess? Um, so that's. So you can play this immediately. So if your opponent had, say, a quite a small hand, because they've been they've been playing out some combos previously, or they had some other, you know, they've, they've been playing out a lot of cards and um, that sort of thing, uh, and they'd run that, run down stuff, and maybe they played a card that um, left them with only a couple of cards in their hand. You could play this and then uh, destroy their entirety of their hand. Is that right? Um, so that seems kind of nasty. I quite like that. I was assuming I'm right there. Okay. Duress. Target opponent reveals a hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. That's an excellent card, and that is going on whatever deck I make. Another pig. Should we have another look at the pig? Good pig. Uh, so two one one red uh, red goblin wizard creature tokens with prowess, which again another term that I'm uh, unaware of. Um, Keen guildsmaster. Track down. Scry uh, scry three, and then reveal the top card of your library. So I think scry is look at the top cards. In your deck, um, so yes, and then maybe you put the after you've looked at them, you can put them wherever you like. You can draw a certain number of them, maybe into your hand. Uh, if it's a creature or a land card, draw a card. Yes, that's it. So that's a draw if if it meets whatever the criteria is. It's kind of interesting. Um, I suppose if you had if you had a deck which had like one or two really important combo creatures and lots of spells, which I think is what we've kind of got so far, um, I think that might be an interesting an interesting way to go about that. Um, I've put that in my uh, my maybe pile. Um, Alchemist gift. We've seen this before. Uh, we like it though. Oh, this guy's cool. Artifact creature golem. So I like golems. I think they're an interesting concept. Um, I think the first mention of them was in that, um, is it a Czech ballet or something like that? That's one of the first uh, inventions of it. And it was, you know, uh, kind of like a re it's one of the oldest concepts of sci-fi. <laughs> you know, you have a you have a, um, a man made out of some non-organic material that you put, uh, put some words in and um, they can then act on those words. Um, yeah, I like that. I think that's an interesting looking thing. It's a, it's a prismite. Cool. But that one looks good and shiny. That's what I'm going to say about that. Hunter's Edge. Anointed Choirist. Yeah, lifelink. Swift Response. Destroy target tra tapped creature. Tolarian Kraken. This is a good one. Right. Here we go. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. When you do, you may tap or untap a target creature. So that seems like, so maybe if you're tapping certain creatures or artifacts or something, well, sorry, just creatures, but if you're tapping certain creatures for the other effects, you might be able to repeat those effects. Um, if you can run this, uh, if, you can, if you can run this and you have enough resources, you can maybe um, tap, Draw cards, tap again, play the, play this effect, draw again. I quite like that. I'm going to keep hold of that. Okay, this is another resurrection card. I'll just keep hold of that as well. That's nice. Which is cauldron? Uh, sacrifice creature. You gain one life and draw a card. Yeah. Okay, that's a bit tokeny. I think. I think you'd be playing a lot of creatures there if you wanted to use that. Temple of Triumph. So this is a rare land 
Temple of Triumph enters the battlefield tapped, and Temple of Triumph enters the battlefield scry one. Okay, so I get to look at, do I just get to look at the top of my deck, is that right? Uh, and then tapping is a, I get a strawberry or vanilla flavoured mana. Oh, and get some more mountains there, lovely. Okay. Okay, more dinosaurs. Okay, Defender. So that's a very, quite a static card there. Uh, oh, that's interesting. Tone Anima can't be blocked as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. See, I like the draw the draw effect cards. Because it just, it just means if you've got a deck that's built around that, you're just moving very fast through it. Cool, that's a draw. So we'll keep that. We'll keep that in there just for drawing's sake. Um, enchant creature control when Cestian training enters the battlefield. Draw a card. Okay, another draw card. Mm. Enchanted creature gets two two. Has first strike and a knight in position. Frantic inventory. Human wizard. Draw a card, then discard a card. Mm, I'm not sure about that. That seems, seems a bit wasteful to me. This creature can't attack. Attacking creature you control gets 1 1. Warded Battlement. I think it looks cool, right? So I, I, I've been, I've recently been talking to um, uh, the guys at um, the Wizards about the new. Um, uh, a new D&D book that's a sort of uh, Magic the Gathering crossover and we talked a little bit about how there's all these like weird places in magic so it's kind of weird to make a um, it's kind of weird to make a RPG in a setting where everything's so strange you know um, you know there's islands on the back of Krakens and that sort of thing Grass for Darkness we like that card Pitchburn Devils these guys are not having a good time. Oh, that's a uh, sort of death rattle thing. When, when Pitch Pan Devil dies, it, deal, it deals three damage to any target. Interesting. Oh, here we go. This I like, quite like these actually. So, is this a neutral card? I think this looks neutral, right? This is just because that's not anything. So, I quite like this. And what's add star star? Have we got diamonds? Maybe there's diamonds. I don't know. Quite like the look of them. Keep, keep an eye on that. We've got an uncommon sorcery here. Uh, gain control of target creature until the end of turn. Untap creature, it gains haste until the end of turn. Add two mana for any of its color. Okay. Hmm. Aura. Okay. Ah, so it's a healing, healing one. Jungle Hollow enters the battlefield tapped. When Jungle Hollow gains the battlefield one life, I quite like that. Uh, and it is we ha we we're quite low on our um, uh, swamp. I think it is swamp lands. Nice night there. And here is our rare for this pack. This is Liliana's uh, Liliana's sta standard bearer. Uh, so this is a zombie knight. Flash. They can be played on your opponent's turn, as I have just learned. Um, when Lilian Stanabera enters the battlefield, draw X card where X is the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Okay, a bit tokeny, so we'd have to ha we'd have to put some tokens in the deck, I guess. Um, but I quite like it. I quite like it. Okay, I am going to pick up the speed of this now, um, so we'll probably just quickly whip through all the uh, commons, uh, unless they're shiny. Oh, hello. I like that one as well. We've got we've got something nice here. Uh, wow, Jesus! This is a special deck or something. Oh, it is. So this is the collector's booster. That's why I'm so excited there. Okay. So this is why I was excited. Okay, you ready? 
Here he is. Yeah, just a token beast, but he's really shiny. Look at that. It's cool, right? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you can see the water effect here uh, in, the, in the detailing there. But it looks great, doesn't it? See, I think these are, because they're shiny, I think these are all really good now. I like that one a lot. That's kind of got a goldy sort of foil to it. It's very nice. Mind dropped. Target player discards two cards. Okay, that's definitely going in the, the deck. Nice looking lands there. Ragged Highlands. Oh, I like to see. Ah, ah, this is the. We got, we've got another one of these, haven't we? Okay, so yes, we're building a shrine deck. That's what we're doing. Draw three cards, discard a card. Yeah, it seems okay. That swamp looks pretty cool. Okay, legendary creature, human shaman. This is Suburia, Tazuldi Caravana. Tolzidi Caravana. Apologies, hit the mic there. Um, so. Haste, another target creature uh, with power two or less can't be blocked this turn. Uh, okay, so yes, yeah, so that gets you gets you extra damage that can't be blocked um, if you want to pay a little bit extra. If you pay a bit of fire, discard your hand until end of turn. Whenever a creature you control with power two or less deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Okay, so this is another really tokeny, um, token thing. Oh, th thank you, Heidi, for appreciating my nice swamp. Let me just go back to that. Okay, so we've got a lot of, we've actually got a couple of mountain flavoured um, cards, so maybe there's a synergy there we need to have a look at. Um, and there is a lot of tokeny stuff, so we probably do need to look at that. that tokeny stuff that leads to draw, or needs, you know, you need to destroy something to get your card. Uh, wow. Other creatures get minus one, minus one. He's cool. Keravak the Spiteful. Is that a good one? I hope it's a good one. He's rare and shiny. Okay, we've had the Temple of Triumph before. That's cool. Uh, cool. Legendary enchantment. If you would draw a card, if you would draw a card, except the first one, you. If you would draw a card, except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. Does that make sense, 21? Extended art as well. Was that on the swamp? Oh no, that was on this one here. Yeah, sorry, this, sorry, let's go back to this. I, I think you gotta remember that I'm just so, so out of touch with magic that like the level of fanciness on even the most basic of cards for me is, um. Uh, pretty fancy. So to have this, which is, uh, this isn't shiny actually, I will say that isn't shiny. Uh, it's slightly reflective, but not shiny. Um, uh, so this extended art is quite nice. Very good. Uh, okay, and then so this, so can you, can you understand this one, anyone? If you would draw a card, except the first. If you would draw a card, except the first one you draw in each of your draw steps, draw two cards instead. I feel like I'm either uh, I've developed a way of not understanding language anymore, or uh, I've gone a bit mad. I'm going to leave that one to the side. I'm going to I'm going to have to Google that one later just to understand it. Um, draw a card and discard a card. We've seen that one before. Oh, hello! Look at that. That's a good one. Okay, Chandra's Magmut. Okay, we've had some nice shiny ones there. So we've gone through the first one of these, but don't worry, we've got more. You're gonna tell me this is another very standard life thing, right? Pretty standard. So in this one, we get another foil. In this case, it is, um, it is not the creatures we're looking for. 
Uh, actually, no, sorry, we should, we should have focused on this for a moment, which is um, elemental dog. So we've got dogs now. Ah, quite unremarkable. You've explained this for me, okay. You, as standard draw, get one card at the beginning of your phase. Any draws after that via, uh, via effects you would use also draw to... Okay, I understand that now. I now like that card. So this is a, um enchantment to boost your draw cards, so either draw cards, right? I think they could have done with an extra comma, but hey. Um, here we go. So, we've got one dog already, which gives us dog synergy. And here's a cat. Look at this cat. Feline Sovereign. Other cats you control get 1-1 one, one and have protection from dogs. Which I'm not sure that's how cats work particularly, but still. Right, more packs. Obviously, what I'm hoping here is that one of these is going to be you know, the, the ultimate rare card that everyone's been looking for. Yeah, they only printed one of it or something. Don't think Titanic Growth is it, is it, but a large dog is funny. Thrill of Possibility, which is a... Uh, okay, this is a discard a card, draw a card, basically. Rookie Mistake, we talked about it earlier. Fetid Imp, like the name of that. Flying fetid imp gains any uh, gains death touch until the end of turn. So apologies for that. I just kicked that with my foot, uh, the camera. Uh, fetid imp gains death touch until the end of the turn. Any amount of damage it deals to a creature is enough to destroy it. Cool. So I can charge that with death touch any time. I like that. I'm going to keep keep hold of that one. Hey, we've got another cat. This is a pride malkin. It's a nice looking cat. It does appear to just be a cat. Oh, dogs. No, it's a hot dog. That's what it is. That's what I should have said about the first one. This is a hot dog. Just looking through a few of these. And, uh, cool, okay. I'm just checking the rares at the back. Okay. So again, that's another neutral, isn't it? Okay. Another dwarf. Uh, I like. Gain control of target creature until the end of turn. Untap the creature. It gains haste until the end of turn. A two mana of any one color. Cool. Okay, so you can take pretty much anything there, can't you? Uh, Cherry Goth. Uh, love all these dogs on fire. I'm not sure, I mean, you're obviously a cat person. I'm not sure you're meant to be saying that sort of thing on the internet. Indulging petition. That's the vampire. So sorry, these are the these are the uh, uncommons here. So an enchantment, uh, which is Light of Promise. Um, oh, okay, so it's a healing-based um, buff there. Um, Noble Vampire. Well, no, Vampire Noble, so very different, very different. Um, okay, Flying, uh, Life Drink, and... Oh, okay, at the beginning of your end uh, end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, each opponent loses three life. That seems cool. So, Basri's Lieutenant. Uh, vigilance, protection from multicolored. Uh, when Basri's Lieutenant enters the battlefield, put one counter on a type creature, so it gives you buff. Uh, whenever Basri's Lieutenant or another creature you control dies, it has one one counter on it, creates two, uh, creates a two two white knight creature token with vigilance. So vi is vigilance a kind of like a blocking mechanism? And then we've got some basic zombies and some planes there. Lovely. Uh, 
Uh, more dinosaurs. Okay, so another hot dog. We'll save we'll save these all for you, uh, Cherry Goth. Um, another delicious crab. Silent Dark, some more damage there. Duress, we like this card. So, ah, okay, so we're getting to a point now where I've seen a lot of these cards, and that's very good um, because it means we can move through them quite quickly. Um, Forgotten Sentinel again, lovely bit of art there. I enjoy that. Uh, so it enters the battlefield tapped, so I guess. Uh, so Vigilance, uh, the creature doesn't tap when attacking. Oh, I see. Okay, I should have been able to work that out, shouldn't I? Okay. Seasoned Hollow Blade. Hollow Blade, sorry. Uh, discard a card, tap Seasoned Hollow Blade. It gains indestructible until the end of turn. Damage and effects say destroy, don't destroy it. Hmm, Okay. I have to think about how that works because you know there's there's only so many situations that seems good in really. Okay, so we've got a uh, an uncommon here, the obsessive stitcher. Okay, I love this card. This is a fabulous. Look at this, obsessive stitcher seems to be stitching people together, um, but maybe too many. Uh, definitely more than social distancing should allow. Um, okay, I like that. Oh, very good. Okay, yeah, so this is a Return from Graveyard card, so I'm going to keep hold of that because I like that. Um, Garrick's Uprising. Another uncommon. Uh, creatures you control have trample. That's very good. We'll keep, I like the look of that as well. Okay, here is our rare for this pack. Permanent uh, permanent you control gain hexproof and instruction from the end of turn. Oh, I think we've already had this one, haven't we? Oh, look at this. That's nice, isn't it? Nice shiny one there. Creature, Devil. Uh, a pitch burn devil. Oh, we've seen this guy before. This is a uh, he's got a death rattle uh, destruction attack. Quite like it. It's very shiny, but uh, yeah, it's all cool. Okay. So we're getting there. We're getting through the getting through the cards. It's a very hot day. You maybe see my uh, hair expand slightly as we carry on. Um, okay, I like that one. We've talked about that before. Uh, rise again, returning target creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. So we keep those. We keep, always keep those because they're thematically what we like. Uh, more dinosaurs. Seen this already. Turn to slag. Okay, so that's a good, um, like, uh, kind of like downgrade attack spell. Lose, lose these sort of uh, benefits that you might have already, and the opponent might have added. Um, ah, okay, so let's ask compare. Where's my Mega Mutt come? Gone. Uh, oh, there he is again. You know, I really should have been separating them out. So we'll compare these. Okay, so we've got a shiny and a non shiny now. I mean, it looks better shiny, doesn't it? Maybe they will do. More hot dogs. Okay. I still like that one. Bad deal. Okay. Uh, you draw two cards, and each opponent discards two cards. Each player loses two life. That does seem like a. That seems like kind of a good deal if you're managing your health. Thrashing Brontodon. Uh, okay, yes, you can destroy the local area with this. Swiftwater Cliffs, there we go. And a soldier. Blood Glutton, good name. I think we're on to, on to a cracking start there. Uh, lifelink is yeah, another heal. Basic creature. Quite expensive, I think. Is that That's quite an expensive card, isn't it? That's later game, I would say. Because I think you can only play one one um, land or mana out a turn. Is that right? Another utility spell. Lovely. Yeah. 
Life goes on. Oh, save a tooth mauler. Another nice cat. Beginning of your turn, uh, your sorry, your end step. Uh, if a creature died this turn, put one one counter on save a tooth mauler and untap it. I assume that kind of means that um, the sort of so, what I, so one of the things I like a lot in games is when there's kind of like a little metaphor, and we, we talk about it in this um, this current issue that's just come out today um, with Elizabeth Hargrave, and, and we talk about things like uh, the tucking mechanism, where it's kind of like a, you're expressing a small metaphor about how things work in the world. Um, and uh, this one's basically saying that this saber-toothed tiger's probably going to eat something that's uh, uh, died this turn. I like that. Valorous steed. So I've done a lot of these. Okie dokie. Miscast. Counter target or instant or sorcery spell unless it control its controller plays three. I like that. That's a resource uh, drain from your opponent. I've got an see, now is this the second I think we've got two we've already got one of these. So we've got two uh Gadrax. Uh, is that unusual? Would you? Would that? Is that an unusual? No. Waker of waves. This seems cool. That's not a shiny one there. Can you see that? Okay. Creatures your opponent's control get minus one, minus zero, uh, and then the power is discard. Uh, Waker of waves. Look into the two top cards of your library. Put one of them in your hand, and the other into your graveyard. So that's quite good, actually, because I think if you. For this, for the deck, I'm I'm kind of thinking of building, um, which is like a hydro graveyard card, maybe with a, f a few um, death touch creatures in it. So you'd have so this kind of card. Uh, you could play that. It's a seven seven. It's huge, so it's quite good anyway. Um, but if you wanted, you can grab a couple of cards and stick and stick one of them in your graveyard, and that the more it's more important that they go in your graveyard. Because that's there's lots of cards in this deck that I've put in the side over here um, that we can grab um, to uh, uh, to then like return graveyard cards to our hand. So I think that's quite good actually. I think I'm going to put that in the uh, put it in the card, uh, put it in the deck cards pile. Uh, right, nice demons there and a swamp. Now I will say they they. The guys at Magic very kindly sent me this very nice looking Ultra Pro um, uh, deck box. Um, but I've got way more cards than I, I thought I would have here. So I'm not sure they're all going to fit. Crash uh, through. Uh, that's a sorcery. Um, Yep, more utility cards. Another pig? Should we have another look at the pig? Truffle snout. Yep, Mince, um, Mistral Singer. So is that someone on top of a tower? Is that right? No. Uh, flying Prowess. When any of you cast a non-creature spell, this creature gets 1-1 one, one to the end of the turn. Cool. Cool, basic... Uh, Basic damage card there and shock. Scanner, seen that before. Epitaph Golem. Here we go. Another golem. I like these. So this looks like a walking tomb. So I think this needs to go in the deck that we build at the end here. Um, uh, put target card from your graveyard at the bottom of your library. Again, so this is uh, another cycling mechanism that I like. Ooh. Okay, so here's an uncommon. The Alpine Houndsmaster. When Alpine Hounds Mice that enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a card named Alpine Watchdog and or a card named Igneous Kerr. Um, reveal them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. Cool. Okay, so this is Get Dogs. This is the Get Dogs uh, card. That's kind of cool, yeah? So we could do a dog deck. I think we've got enough to do dog decks. Um, I don't know, I'm not quite sure how the dog decks would work particularly, but um, it's probably like a bit of a rush tokeny deck, right? Um, and then we've got the Kites of Surf uh, Freebooter there, um, which I feel like I recognise from somewhere, but not, not today. Um, 
And here we've got our galaxy brain again. And some normal stuff. Lovely. Apologize for all this stuff that's creeping into the screen. This is our last pack from the uh, Core 2021 set. Um, but we do have two more of the shiny laden other sets. Uh, sorry, the shiny laden other packs. Okay, Alchemist Gifts. Uh, Target Creatures gets 1 1. We've done this before actually, so we'll skip through these because we've seen these all already, right? One of our Opt. Oh, Scry. Oh, yes, no, we've done that as well. Hey, this looks cool. Oh, no, we've already, we have already looked at this. Oh, sorry, I'm just, I'm just looking at the cool art again and saying, this looks cool. And uh, then realizing, indeed, it is cool. And I've put it in my pile of ones I think might go into the next deck. Okay, so that's a freeze attack there. Skeleton Archer. That's cool. When Skeleton Archer enters the battlefield, it deals one damage to any target. I like that. I think, I think that's a nice utility card for picking things off. I think in those those cases where you do have a 1-1 one, one you want to remove on your opponent's side, uh, that might be quite good. Um, that's causing a nuisance or something like that, or might um, just need that little bit more to, uh, to take a to take a bit, chip a bit of damage off. Okay, nice healing there. Bolt Hound, Elemental Dog. So this is a Lightning Dog. Uh, so this dog is not on fire. Haste. Whenever Bolt Hound attacks other creatures you control get 1-1 one, one until the end of turn. I like that idea that somehow you're charging up your, your other um, your other creatures um, that you have on the board. Uh, I was about to say Jet Ski Elder. No, it's Jezake Elder. Jeske Elder. Uh, that's Prowess again. And Oh, so whenever, whenever the Jet Ski Elder deals combat damage to the player, you may draw a card. If you do, discard the card. Quite like that. Again, it's another cycling sort of thing. Um, Thralling Hold is another uncommon. Uh, enchant creature, you, you can't choose an untapped creature as a spell's target. When you cast it, you control enchant, enchanted creature. So does that mean for the rest of the game? Is that right? I may need, I may need some help from chat here. So this, this one here is this control a target creature for the rest of the game. It's only a five mana cost total. Now, someone's just said that they like my voice in chat, so I'm paranoidly looking at the uh, audio input here to make sure I haven't been talking uh, on mute for um, an hour and five minutes. Uh, so thanks. So does this is that how that one works? We I'm going to take complete control of a creature. Oh, into enchantment or creatures? Of course, because the enchantment is attached to the creature. Gotcha. I like that as well. I think I think killing your enemy with their own creature is a, a funny way to win a game. I like that. That's going in the stick in a deck pile. Uh, Idol of Endurance artifact here. When Idol of Endurance enters the battlefield, exile all creatures, uh, creature cards with uh, converted mana cost, converted mana cost three or less. Does that, that means converted from their um, from their like the, their flavor, right? Um, until end of turn, you may. Uh, Exile all creatures. So, wait, wait, wait. Does that mean from your graveyard until idle endurance leaves the battlefield? Sorry, does this thin out? This so this thins out your graveyard. Is that how that works? So, if you wanted to just get a certain kind of thing in your graveyard, is that right? Now, okay, so uh, forcing it has just said, I smell some really good Veladek and Orrery flash stuff with that steel creature enchantment. Now, I may have to say that 
I understand very little of that other than stealing a creature maybe on your opponent's turn. Is that what you're saying? Hi, Grumpy Turnip. <laughs> okay, so this is cool. I like this. Just, uh, it's weird. It's weird, isn't it? You know what it's like. When things are a bit weird. When, you, when you're feeling a bit weird, this is what you feel like, isn't it? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, I like that idol of endurance. I am confused about the value of um, doing stuff like uh, of uh, reducing what's in your graveyard. Okay, we have these two here. I opened. I did have a third one. I opened earlier. Um, I was really excited about um, that. I uh, uh, that I thought because I thought it was a normal pack. So these are meant to be shiny. These are uh, collectors boosters. Um, so I assume they're somehow. Uh, illegal for competitive play or something like that. Um, cool. Um, yeah, so forcing what you were saying there about the um, Veladek and Ori flash stuff, uh, where you steal a creature, is it like you would just, they just, when they attack me with a creature, uh, you can steal it immediately. Is that right? And then use it to block the creature's killing. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's that's uh yeah that sounds ideal that sounds like the most fun way to um to win a game i think is to uh um i say the most fun it's probably the most annoying way to win a game um but i quite i quite like i, I quite like sort of control decks and things like that as a, a concept and then something that maybe heavily cycles the graveyard and then also steals your opponent's stuff because uh, obviously if it, if it does in your side that goes into your graveyard doesn't it so you can have it back later if you're doing a graveyard cycle thing Yes, it's the, as you say, forcing it. Uh, it's like a uh, you are your own worst enemy kind of concept for a deck. Exactly, that's it. Um, yes, or uh, uh, fans of The Simpsons will know it as the Nelson effect of um, uh, why are you hitting yourself? Okay. Let's, let's open these up. These are really shiny. They're very nice looking. Um, and oh, we've got a dog. It's not on fire though. This is just dog. So I'm not sure what, what would you call this effect here? Because it, is it just foiled? Is that right? I suppose it's nearly all foiled to some degree. That is confusing me slightly. Nice dog. Good dog, in fact. Concordia Pegasus. Yeah, very nice. Just a shiny forest, like that. Oh, okay, right, we're gonna look at this one because look at the art, cracking stuff. When Deathboon Thalid dies, create a 1-1 one, one green sapling creature, a sap rolling creature token. Now, if that token did anything, we'd know about it, wouldn't we? Because this to me looks like a creature that's gonna, when, when it dies, is gonna give you a, um, a death touch. Um, one one or something like that. That's what it feels like to me. So, uh, I guess I guess it's just a normal one one, isn't it? it it's not like it's got. Um, <laughs> I want to eat one. <laughs> the grumpy turnip says, "I want to eat one." You want to eat one of these? I'm not sure you sh should. I'm not sure you'd even want to make friends with it, really. I mean, it isn't. I, I like exotic mushrooms, but I would not eat this. Okay. Nice ogre warrior here. Turret ogre. <laughs> Which I like. Uh, where's his head? Can you see his head there? Oh, no, there it is. Sorry. I was very confused. I thought he was facing the other way. Um, <laughs> whereas he's just got a very meaty back. Uh, that's cool. Uh, Thralling hold. Uh, ah, this is yes. This is a grab a creature card. So I'm just going to slip this one in the. Let's keep that. Oh, hot dog. No, electric dog. That's right. Hey, that mountain looks cool. Not particularly scalable, but it's a good mountain. 
Oh, nice. So this is a rare, and it's got um, full full uh, full full uh, full card art. So flying uh, shackle guys can block only creatures with flying. Tap two, untap spirits you control. Tap target creature you don't control. Oh, that's funny as well. Okay, we'll, we'll stick this one in the deck. We'll have to maybe make some like spirit synergy. We have a couple of things in here that we've kind of piled up that we that we kind of like. Um, not that this is in any kind of fit state over here to be called a pile. Um, uh, but yeah, we can maybe maybe do a small amount of uh, spirit synergy there. And um, yeah, stop the opponent's players, uh, the opponent's creatures doing anything. Oh wow! So this is a full full card art here, uh, rare. It's another dog. It's a pack leader. Uh, other dogs you control get one one. Okay, so we we should probably I'll, I'll probably try and put together a um a dog, a dog based, uh, the goodest boy exactly. That's it. Um. Um, and what's that there forcing it oh this is the uh, this is a creature version of Icy Manipulator yes it is isn't it where have I put that that's in here somewhere I promise you uh, <laughs> um, yes. uh, but look at this this is the goodest boy as as has been pointed out um, other dogs you control get 1-1 one, one. do you know why it's because they're surrounded by a really good boy where the pack leader attacks, prevent the combat damage that would be dealt their turn to, the, to dogs you control. That's kind of mean. I'm not sure I'm into that. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, Chandra's Incinerator. That's a pretty big creature, 6-6. Six, six. Spell, this spell costs uh, X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponent this turn. That's interesting. So will that be direct... So direct like spell damage, is that right? I think it must be. Cool, more dogs. Uh, Liana's devotee, zombies you control get one one, uh, uh, sorry, one zero. At the beginning of your end step, the creature died. Uh, this turn you may pay one to do so, create a two two black zombie creature token. Mm, is that good? It's very tokeny, again, which is a. Uh, I'm not super into. We could. I mean, we could. We could think about that. Uh, the Basri Lieutenant. I think we've seen this one before. Uh, oh, look at that! Basri Sol Solidarity. Put a put a one one counter on each creature you control. So that's just a flat boost buff to every uh, character you're um, or creature you're in control of. <laughs> this guy. It looks fun. It's not a dog, though, is it? I don't like the border on that zombie card. Let's have a look. Let's go back to that zombie card. This one here, yes, it's a bit garish, isn't it? That's not not an ideal, um, not an ideal uh, color scheme. I better look good without a border, though, right? Uh, forcing it, that's very good. Wow, he does so much. You're right. I mean, <laughs> for, you know, in in maybe the design world, you'd say that this is a powerful use of white space or uh, negative space. <laughs> uh -huh. There we go. Okay, let's uh, let's tidy these up a little bit. Uh, we've got one more shiny pack, and then we're going to move on to some Akira, um, Akira, <laughs> some Akora. A Korea stuff, um, which is I've got some uh, some pre-release stuff there, and uh, I've got a commander deck. Um, the only minor problem is that I am actually melting. Um, you might be able to hear the sound of a small uh, MacBook dying quietly in the corner. Um, <laughs> you're going to pull out your uh, Inspector Gadget invisible uh, invisible ink light so I can see what it does. Hey, look, I think that would be a fun mechanic for a card game, that sometimes you have to um, decipher what a card does based on maybe some kind of like sheet you put over it or something like that. I think that's kind of, that's kind of a funny idea. Um, bird. Bird. So this is, um, yeah, welcome to uh, Wingspan 2. This is a, a live reveal of Wingspan 2. Um, uh, this is Hargrave's uh, follow-up to... Uh, 
2019's uh, best game and Mariposas, which is the cover of Tabletop Gaming Magazine's uh, uh, issue 44. Um, yeah, it's a bird. It flies. That's what it does. <laughs> oh, like, so this is the first card I opened of these packs and first of my new, my return to magic. So there's a spine Megadon on there. Looking very nice. Celestial Enforcer, pretty basic. Nice looking land. Uh, nice looking mountain there. Not as nice looking as this other mountain, like this. If I was visiting, this is the tourist hotspot right here. Crypt Lurker, right. You know we're going to have a look at this one. When Crypt Lurker enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice a creature or discard a creature card. If you do, draw a card. Nice. Okay, so maybe a bit tokeny, but um, yeah. Uh, when I say tokeny, I mean uh, small creatures that we're going to do stuff to uh, negatively. Uh, an uncommon here. I like the way they've used the um, the shiny effect on the uh, rope there. Um, so let's gain some life and... Uh, oh, enchanted permanent can't attack or block and its activated abilities can't be activated unless they're mana abilities. Okay, so you have to pay their base cost for it. So any sort of free tapped uh, um, things won't work out. The hollow blade here, seen him, we've seen him before. He just wasn't shiny before. It's a nice uh, plains land there, or vanilla. <laughs> uh, forcing it says, they should release a line of magic cards where they glow in the dark. That would be a great set. I think I think magic you can play in the dark is a um, likely to be a uh, initially well-received, later um, <laughs> badly reviewed <laughs> set. But to be honest with you, um, someone uh, more knowledgeable will probably tell me that um, they've done this before and they did it in the 90s. This, sorry, this this looks like you in the morning. Is that what you're saying, Grumpy Turnip? This one. Well, I mean, look all right, really. I wouldn't worry too much about it, unless you mean this is on your way to the bathroom to shave. I suppose that could be. I suppose that could be what you're saying. <laughs> oh, okay. Demonic embrace here. Uh, enchant creature. Enchant creature getting these three one. It's flying. And there's a demon in addition to its other types. I like that. Um, you may cast a like embrace from your graveyard by paying three life and discarding a card in addition to paying its other costs. Cool. I like that one. That's, that's going in the to deck pile. See the truth. Look at the top three cards of your library. Put one of those cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. If the spell was cast from anywhere other than your hand, put each of those cards into your hand instead. Okay, so if I cast this from the graveyard, I get benefits there, don't I? This is what I look like in the morning, by the way, uh, Grumpy Turnip. Total peace. Terror of the Peaks. I like it. Nice, nice looking dragon. So that is, is that just normal gold there? So is that normal rare? Because that looks slightly burnished to me. No, the dark one. Do you mean this one? Is this you in the morning? There we go. <laughs> nice dragon. It's a good looking dragon. Oh, elemental lizard. Uh, it's got a nice flame along the bottom here. I like that. I think that looks good. Uh, yep, I think we've seen this one before. Oh, we've got a planeswalker. Chandra. Heart of fire. There we go. See, now I... Last time I played Magic, um, Mythic Rare. That's a Mythic Rare. Thank you, Hyder. Okay, so these are Mythic Rare. This, I, I'm assuming these are better than Rare. This Chandra one looks good. Okay, so I, I have not played with Planeswalkers because it's just been such a long time since I've actually played Magic. Um, so uh, we're getting back into it. I guess we'd have to build a deck around this. So how would this work? Um, discard your hand. Uh, exile the top three cards of your library until until the end of the turn. You may play cards exiled this way. Uh, so that's a plus. So that's plus one, plus one, minus nine. So okay, we're going to have to we're going to have to do a bit of a um, research on how this planeswalker actually works. So this is one of the new ones they introduced um, for.
before the set. So I imagine uh, this might have been, well, we don't know, do we? But this might have been planted um, for me. Um, is, that, is that how it works? Is that, or is that absolute slander? Um, that's a nice pool. I've pulled, apparently. Excellent. Cool. So I'm going to have to do some more research on how these actually work because this this is quite confusing for me in terms of um, what these pluses and minuses mean. Um, so if someone wants to explain to me very quickly in the chat, that's cool. Um, oh, we've got another devotee here, uh, but a shiny one. Slightly better in, slightly better border there. Like that. Oh, this guy's cool. <laughs> See, I, I like the robots, basically. That's what I like. Um, so shiny and also um, full full border. Um, so it's an artifact creature of the golem. Uh, I like these. Uh, when solemn sol some, when solemn simulacrum enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land guide. Guard, put that into the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. When he dies, you may draw a card. So that's quite exp an expensive way to get a land out, but you do get a two two for it. So I think that's like a decent kind of like um value card right uh unless unless someone can tell me this is not good value at all i think it looks cool i mean this is what iron man used to look like back in the old days nice very good that one might go in the deck i like that i like the idea of pulling lands out like that okay so that is the end of uh core 2021 set so if you were uh, bizarrely here just for that um i understand if you there's suddenly a a, a massive exodus uh, right we're moving on to cora okay i'm going to show you yet again i'm going to show you the health token uh, or health counter and you can tell me if it's a good one or not i mean i think you're trying to uh i think you're trying to uh wind me up when you tell me they're all pretty standard uh, I'm, and that maybe they're all standard and there's no, there's no rarity in them whatsoever <laughs> okay so we're doing Akura now which is the, the most recent set the, the thing about Akura is um, Ikaria actually is Ikaria um, the thing about it is that this is the set where they made some really really big monsters um, so some little tokens there, quite useful. Uh, deck divider, there we go. Okay, and some 15 card booster packs there. So this is what we're gonna go through. Um, but they added some big monsters, because this is the one they did uh, the Toho um, crossover with, which is the Godzilla people. So what we're really hoping for is that there's a Godzilla in one of these packs, or in fact a Mothra, I'd settle for a Mothra, um, but we'll see. Uh, this is uh, Yorion, the Sky Nomad. This is our um, straight up uh, uh, foil that we get in the deck. Um, there we go. So that's a legendary creature. Uh, as companion, your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. Um, uh, Companion, your starting deck contains at least 20 cards more than the minimum deck size. If this card is your chosen companion, you may cast it once from outside the game. I mean, this, this is when we go a bit nuts. So I'm, hold on, hold on a second. I'm going to show you a, a promo card I got sent when I um, first became the editor of Tabletop Gaming. And uh, and that was my that was the first magic card that I got um, uh, in a long time. So I'll show you that and then um, we'll... Uh, and then we'll, then we'll start opening these. Right, guys. Here we go. Here's, here's, here's what they sent me as a, basically as a Christmas present. Now, this is a decorated name. Um, it's 3-3. Three, three. It's a four drop. It uh, It's shiny. It's very nice. It is obviously not for competitive play it's a thing they just send out but um so uh present arms sorcery adventure uh exchange your library for another deck you own from outside the game shuffle your library whenever decorated knight attacks draw a card from your original deck if it's outside the game 
So immediately I, I know that the core set that we've just opened is much, much simpler um, than this or indeed this, which is, is playing some kind of meta game that I'm really not ready for. Okay, so let it begin. Uh, yes, I do like a golem uh, hider. Uh, that, is, uh, that, is, that is what I like. Okay, gust of wind. Costs two less if you can control a creature with flying. Okay, that's a nice bit of flying synergy there. I'm not sure. I might actually start a separate pile somewhere else. <laughs> There's simply too many cards here. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll just start the pile here. Okay. Uh, Raking claws. Uh, another uh, double strike. Okay, so that's double damage. Um, healer, uh, cleric, cleric there. Uh, whenever you cycle an, another card, you'll, you gain one life. So you could, in theory, you could cycle multiple cards there um, and gain lots of life. Uh, Whisper Squad, Human Soldier, very nice. Uh, humble natu uh, Naturalist. Mm. Uh, add one mana of any color to spend this mana only to cast a creature spell. So this is um, a support card, isn't it? So you'd, you'd use that to um, uh, open up other um, uh, creatures' uh, spells cheaper, I think, uh, of one mind. This spell costs two less to cast if you control a human creature and a non-human creature. Blood Curdle. Destroy a target creature. Put a menace counter on a creature you control. Uh, can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Okay, so that's a little bit more effort to uh, uh, block your creatures there. That one, I quite like that one, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the thing of creating a separate deck of things I like the look of. Um, this is just a turtle, from the looks of things. It's a, blo a blocking turtle. Prickly armor set, cool. Flying tiger. Uh, okay, so there's a sort of human rider uh, thing there. So here's an artifact. Uh, you can tap it to add all fire, planes, or swamp. Hey, this looks cool. So this is an un uncommon, I think. Uh, so this is a nightmare snake, Zargoth Mamba. Whenever this creature mutates, target creature that an opponent controls gains minus two, minus two until the end of turn. Okay, so mutations are something when I'm not ready for. Okay, majestic oricorn. Now I'm not sure what an oricorn is. Looks like a spiky unicorn. Uh, more spiky. Uh, mutate three. If you cast a spell for mutate, cost put over or under target non-human creature you own. Mutate into the creature top. Uh, on top plus all abilities from under it. Okay, I see. Yes, yeah, so this is so when we start mutating, we end up with something like kind of like this, where you you you'd be able to see both of these things. So it'd have flash and vigilance, for example. Yeah, obviously, I don't think these two things could mutate into each other because this one's a fish and the other one's a kind of horse. Um, cool. Octopus looks delicious. This is my rare for this. It's got mutate, a cheap mutate. Um, if you cast a spell for which mutate cost, put it over or under a non-human creature you own, then mutate into the creature on top, plus all abilities from under it. Interesting. Flash. Whenever a creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. I like I quite like that one. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep that, but I am gonna keep the C dash octopus because I like that. Tranquil Cove looks nice there. Almost certainly a Kraken underneath all that. Okay, human soldier. Okay, token, lovely. Oh, I think it might be 30 degrees in this room. Oh my. So I think you get a little push out card of these in each pack anyway. That's quite good, isn't it? I didn't realize that was the thing. Cool, okay. Blitz Leech. I'm uh, obviously in for that one. Uh, okay, so this is a uh, it's got flash and so you can play it whenever or in response to your opponent. Um, when it enters the 
battlefield, a target creature or an opponent controls get 2 2 instant and return removal counters from the creature. I like it, so that's a proper demoralizing effect card there. Do you like that? Adventurous Impulse. Sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may reveal a creature or land card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest of the bottom of the library. That's okay. I quite like that. Uh, but I'm probably, probably not going to use it because I don't think there's very much of uh, forest syn synergy in the deck we're eventually going to build. Uh, so we've seen that already. Uh, Shredded Sail. Choose one. Destroy Artifact. Uh, four damage to target creature or cycle two. Uh, it's okay. Ah, cat. Meow. Uh, so it's a... When the garrison cat dies, create one one white human soldier creature token. Okay. So, I mean, they are very funny, aren't they? Because this is, you know, this could be a majestic tiger leaping through this, um, uh, some sort of forest or something like that. But actually, this is a cat rubbing up against the, the um, boots of soldiers. Uh, Light of Hope. Quite nice art on that one. Dark Bargain. Here we go. Uh, look at the top three cards of your library, put two of them in your hand and the other to your graveyard. Uh, deals two damage to you. I like that card. I like the look of that. Uh, Day Squad Marshal. Pretty, pretty basic, straightforward stuff. Uh, creatures on your opponent's control get minus two, minus two, zero to the end of turn. Cycling uh, draws a card. Yeah, it's probably quite good actually to have some draw like that that uses the cycle mechanic. Um, okay, here's a uncommon. Uh, storm car, storm wild caprador. Uh, it's a bird goat. It's just, just it says just there. That's quite funny, isn't it? Uh, probably not going to do that. Rotillion reflection. Whenever you cycle a card, you may have uh, you may have Rotillion reflection become a five four dinosaur creature with trample and haste in addition to other types until the end of turn. I mean, I, I quite like that. It's quite expensive, I think. But, um, yeah, I don't think we're going to keep that. Okay. Oh, Huntmaster Liger. Another cat. Mutate. Whenever the creature can mutate, other creatures you control get one, uh, get plus whatever, whatever, until the end of turn, where X is the number of times a creature has mutated. This creature is mutated. Right, okay, so once we start mutating this up, um, I really like the art on this as well. This is very, I mean, it's a very comic book, but I do really like that. Uh, Zerda, the Dawnwalker. It's a nice fox. What a lovely fox. Uh, companion, each permanent card in your starting deck has an activated ability. Ah, I guess I've yeah, read that already. Um, abilities you activate aren't mana abilities cost two less to activate. So that's very good, isn't it? I think we'll just stick that in there uh, for now. Uh, and then we've got some... Oh, we've got a shiny De uh, Dranath healer. I was about to say Danish healer. But that's just the heat getting to me. This is a ferocious Tigorilla. Tigorilla? So, um, cat monkey. Cat ape, in fact. Um, so little bits of flavour text on magic cards are one of the best parts, aren't they? They're the part that tells us about the world and um, kind of draws us in in some ways. And sometimes they're just cheeky. So this one's quite good. This is, from a certain perspective, it's an inspiring story of overcoming obstacles. Spontaneous flight. Look at that poor flying fox. Corpse churn. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna keep this one. Uh, put top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Uh, yep, that seems good to me. Ram through. Frost links. So we're gonna start speeding up through these, just so hopefully you don't get too bored. Um, I'm sure you're all riveted already. But okay, plummet. Destroy target creature with flying. Quite like that, but. Suffocating fumes. Creature your opponent's control get minus one, minus one to the end of turn. Cycling two. That's good. Yeah, I like that. Dreamtail Heron. Mutate. Uh, 
uh, flying whenever the creature mutates, draw a card. That's good. So if you're building something up, if you're mutating something, um, getting this on early gives you a, an advantage about whether it can be attacked and stuff like that. And then also uh, gives you a good draw. So I quite like that. I'm going to keep that. Life. Hopefully C. Uh, we're on C un uncommons now. The Rooting Moloch, which is a uh, big lizard, I guess. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, exit exile, exile target card with a cycling ability from your graveyard until the end of your next turn. You may play that card. Okay, so that's like a one use re reuse of a, uh, a uh, graveyard card. Quite like it. But. Regal Lionosaur. So the okay, so the mutates mean we do have some really silly animals here. Um, animals, creatures. Um, dinosaur cat, of course. Um, oh, because that's a boost for this character, this character, this creature, um, the other creatures you're holding when it mutates. I quite like that. Sanctuary Smasher. It's big. It's a rhino beast. Um, first strike, so I think it always hits first, uh, and then. When you cycle it, uh, put the first strike counter on a creature you control, so that's good, so it passes it on. Unpredictable Cyclone. Okay, this looks good fun. If cycling ability of another non-land card would cause you to draw a card, instead exile cards from the top of your library until you, until you exile a card that shares the card type with the cycled card. You may cast that card without paying for the mana cost, then put the exiled cards that weren't cast this way into the bottom of your library in a random order. And some mountains. Okay. Forgive me while I rehydrate for just ooh, just a moment. I have just knocked over quite a lot of cards there. Okay, let's get this uh let's get this going again. Right. Dead weight. Enchanted creature uh minus two minus two. That seems kind of interesting. Probably beacon stuff with that. Uh I think it's interesting if you do that, you mix something like that with um, one of the cards that uh, lets you take control of an opponent's um, creatures. Um, it might make it easier to kill, put in your graveyard and then cycle back round. So you keep hold of it. Uh, honey Mammoth. Look at these things. They're bonkers. I love it. Look at this guy. That's a nice healing card. Uh, one of nine. Priceratops, Pyroceratops, Solid Footing, Bushmeat Poacher. Uh, sacrifice another creature, you gain a life equal to the creature's toughness. Draw a card. Mm, maybe. Hey. <laughs> My apologies. Oh, there we go. Um, Boot Nipper enters the battlefield with your choice of Death Touch counter, a lifelink, or a lifelink counter on it. Okay, I like that. Yep, so we can do that for minor heal or otherwise. Um, okay, coordinated charge. <laughs> okay, fully grown. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what the hell is this? <laughs> Sorry, is this a Sandy Peterson game? Are we, are we looking at hell creatures now? <laughs> Um, thank you for all those people who are blessing me for my, my sneeze. Uh, <laughs> uh, what is this? Look at this thing. <laughs> uh, 
just I mean <laughs> where's this creature <laughs> um so it's just a plus three three it's just a <laughs> to, so this is the kind of creature that this is why Magic the Gathering obviously needs minis because I want to see what this would look like <laughs> okay that's very silly right fine okay we're on to um our uh, uncommons now this is uh Boone the wish giver uh draw four cards excellent I like that uh, yes, why not? We're going to keep that one in our deck. Weaponize the monsters. I think they've already been weaponized to the point of silliness. Um, uh, I love it. But uh, sacrifice a creature, weaponize the monsters, deal two damage to any target. Okay, that's cool. Okay, getting on to the rare ones now. Channeled force. Uh, an additional cost to cast a spell or discard X cards. Target player draws X cards. Channel force deals X damage to the one target creature or planeswalker. Well, which one's your new favourite, uh, Cherry Goth? Sorry, I, I zipped past those, didn't I? So we're probably talking maybe about the uh, boon of the Wishgiver, or is it the um, is it the incredibly silly, um, uh, fully grown? Is it this one? <laughs> this one, yeah. <laughs> oh, it just makes me smile. What are you even doing? <laughs> and also he's got a friend as well, hasn't he? <laughs> uh, anyway, sorry. Getting very distracted by that. Um, so this is Channel Force. Um, cool, okay. So this this is a kind this is kind of a um uh exchange card, I think. So you're exchanging the cards you draw or discard to to uh do damage. Uh and that is a um, or is a blueberry and strawberry flavored one? Oh, Amori the Collector. I right, look at this one. This is a companion. Uh, choose a card type. Oh, okay. So it can be either forest or um, or swamp. Um, and then uh, spells you cast of the chosen type cost one less to cast. Okay, that's quite interesting. Some islands and then oh hello this one's sneaking up at the back here uh jigatha the wellspring uh elemental elk another companion oh wow okay so you tap this uh it's a five five and it's got a mixed cost at the top there so it's one or the other my, is my understanding of that um and it adds one of each type it can't be used for um you don't suddenly get that much mana to use as you like on generic costs, but um, but you can use them against any costs you need. So that's kind of that's kind of interesting. I kind of like that one. Yeah. Okay. So maybe in a different a different kind of deck, we'll we'll have a look at that. Okay. Excellent. Helica or Halacia, a glider. Uh, it's a squirrel. Let's be honest, it's a squirrel. Um, it's just a nasty one. These are the ones that are going to come for the grey squirrels after they uh, came for the red ones. Uh, right. A serrated scorpion. When a serrated scorpion dies, it deals two damage to each opponent and you gain two life. I like that card. Uh, so we've got a lot of cards in here that do damage to us. Um, that's a nice card for gaining a little bit of health back. Um, and also a bit of crowd control. Greater Sandworm. Excellent. Can you see that there? Fabulous. It's just a, emerging from the side of a mountain. A sandy, rocky mountain, obviously. So this is sort of your dune, your dune card. Uh, can't be blocked by creatures with power two or less. That seems good. Seven, seven. It's big. Yeah, so maybe there's, there's probably scope for making just some really... See, the problem with the, having these two different, wildly different sets is that um, one's really basic and I'm just learning pure concepts. And then this one's obviously highly themed towards these big these big monsters. Um, and uh, I'm just getting distracted by everything. Okay, Glimmer Ball. Glimmer Bell, sorry. Lava Serpent. Nice uh, fiery serpent there. Heightened reflexes. <laughs> okay. Migratory Great Horn. The art on these ones, 
these sort of like um, more comic book style ones. Um, I guess because they've got this uh, sort of transparent part here. Um, oh, this is really good. This is good. So I like this one a lot. This is if you, you can search your library for it um, for a land card um, every time it mutates. So if you had that as a basic part of your mutation strategy, you'd um, you'd rack up the mana really quickly. <laughs> Gloom Pangolin. I think it's a nightmare pangolin. Look at that, fabulous. Still, it looks cool. So that's going in our our potential stack. Mystery, mysterious egg. I was about to say mystery egg, which um very different. Uh, cool. So that's a a nice base um mutate card. Escape protocol, interesting. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor. Interesting. Blitz of the Thunder Raptor deals damage to target creature or planeswalker equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. Again, so discarding discarding spells away that way, that could be quite useful. Necropanther. This is a cat nightmare. Uh, I've never met a cat that wasn't a nightmare. So uh, when this creature mutates, return target creature card with a converted mana cost of three or less to your grave from your graveyard to the battlefield. I like that one a lot. So that one's going in. Okay. Here's our here's our rare dirge bat, which is a uh, flash flying and uh, when this creature mutates, destroy target creature or planeswalker uh, an opponent controls. Cool. And this is a very delicious looking uh, land. Oh, shining! Crash of the Titans again. There we go. Very nice. Got a cat. Some uh, whisper squad. Southern spinnerets, thieving otter. That's a cute one. Is that watercolor even? You know. Uh, that's another nice draw card. Dranath stinger. Checkpoint officer. Rumbling rock slide. Uh, this is a sleeper dart. Okay, so that's a good, that's probably a nice one to slow people down with. Uh, memory leak. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-land creature that will play as graveyard or hand and exile it. Oh, okay, yes, we like that card. Uh, this is some kind of, I think personally, I think this is kind of a cat. <laughs> Monstrous step. Target creature is seven seven until the end of turn. I really like. I do like these um, like forest based um, cards. But they're all about growth and getting really big monsters on the on the board. Chittering harvester. So another mutate. Whenever the creature mutates, each opponent sacrifices a creature. <laughs> God. Okay, I'm gonna put that in my would like to would like to play deck, um, and we'll see we'll see how we get on with that. But, um, yeah, Parcel Beast, Elemental Beast. Look at the top card of your library. Uh, if it's a land card, you may put it into the battlefield. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, put it into your hand. Okay, so it's just draw or whatever. Quite like it. Offspring's Revenge. Now this looks like a cat, for sure. Quite a sad one, really. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, exile, target red, white, or black creatures, uh, creature card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of the card, except it's 1-1, one, one, and gains haste until your next turn. Nice. Okay. Cool. I like that. Uh, quite an expensive and weird mix of um, things required for it, um, as far as I'm aware. Okay, very good. Now, we're on to the collector's boosters, uh, which will be... Uh, very excited to see that all going to probably will be shiny, I think. Look at these highlands. Look at these highlands. Okay. St 
startling development. Interesting uh, <laughs> situation that this, uh, this uh, eagle seems to have found itself hatching. Quite like that one. I might stick that in the two keep pile there. Uh, coordinated charge. I think we've seen that one already. Frost links looks quite good there. Zenith flare. Zenith flare deals X damage for any target you gain, and you gain X life where X is the number of cards of the siphoning ability in your graveyard. I like that one. I don't think it's got the synergy with the, the kind of lands I want to use in this, but I do like that one because it's a, a good health return there. Uh, Hornbash Mentor, I think we looked at this one earlier. Oh, another nice swamp. So we've got a couple of really nice swamps. I like that one. This, I feel like I know this art. I feel like this is ancient art at this point. Um, I'm going to put that to the side and look that up later, see, see if I can find Maybe I have to dig out my old cards, see if I can... Um, uh, see if that art is remained the same. Manuscape Reflector. So this is a now. I think if if Hyde is still in the uh, still in the chat, maybe they can <laughs> help me out with what this symbol means. Um, it's like a shield of some kind, maybe a golden shield. We may have to Google that one later. Um, if anyone knows what the Funny little symbol here means, because uh, I don't think I've seen that yet. Um, but maybe it's just a symbol for artifact. Actually, no, it's just a symbol for an artifact, isn't it? And then um, it's just telling me that it's a rare, so it's fine. I don't need to get too excited. Oh, yes, look at this. Here we go. I'm I'm into this one. Okay. A demon kraken called Gru... Uh, I'll just say Gura. Um, Oh, is it different to the other ones? Um, this one here. So these, I think, I think um, all these basic, all the um, the core sets had these very easy to read um, things that kind of just say that they're from what set they're from. Um, whereas I think these are identifying themselves as whether this is a this is an artifact, for example, and it's gold there. So that just means it's rare and an artifact. That's what I think that means. Uh, I may have just d double explained that because um, we're about twenty seconds behind or something like that. Um, Doom of the Depths. So this is a good, good-looking companion. I think uh, when they enter the battlefield, each player puts the uh, top four cards of their library into the graveyard. Um, put a creature card and even and even convert a mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. I quite like that. So I think that's another. That's a good one for you. Nick something good from your opponent, then you can put it out. That's good. Okay, this is a nice shiny one here. Extinction event. Choose odd or even. Exile each creature with a converted mana cost of the chosen value. Zero is even. Uh, quite like that. That's probably good for clearing clearing the board at points. Um, nice dinosaur there. Cloud piercer. Yeah. Quite Trumping, trump, trumpeting gnar, which is, I guess, like a canoe. Um, so I think I think these designate what um, whether they belong to uh, what kind of this is. This is like a creature symbol. So I think this is an uncommon creature symbol for these ones. Uh, so it's just create tokens. Um, that's a nice land. I like that. I'm just going to put that in my pile there already. Um, okay, here we go. Dorat, the perfect pet. Now, I think we'll be the judge of that. Is this the perfect pet? Um, it's a fairy dragon. Uh, is that the kind of face that you want asking you to bring you some food? Uh Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put one one on a counter on a sprite dragon. Now, this this isn't sprite dragon though, is it? Oh no, it is this is sprite dragon. Okay, sorry, the, sorry, I was looking at the name at the top. It's a nice looking card. It's pretty goofy though, isn't it? Um, 
Uh, I'm not sure it's the perfect pet. Um, put your votes in now as to whether this is the perfect pet or not. Oh, chittering harvester. I think we've seen this before. Looks nice though. Nice little sheen on it. Cool. And a dinosaur beast. Pretty basic one there. Nice. Okay, that is it for normal packs. Um, so I'm going to move these things out of the way. Oh, I said that. Complete lie. I found another pack here. We were very nearly at the commander deck. And after that, we can all... I would usually say we could all go to the pub, but we can't go to the pub. So we're instead, we can all go and enjoy the sunshine in our gardens and things like that. Um, cool. Unexpected fans. That looks cool. It's just the weirdness of these creatures in this set are just... <laughs> like, what is... What is it, what's this guy? <laughs> this is just a dinosaur. He's normal. Cool. Nice looking uh, land there. The sandworm that we saw earlier. A little bit shiny. Just in the sky mainly. Uh, thieving otter. I think we've seen this this guy before. I like the uh, these little bits they've put in on the... Uh, well, I guess I'm going to say his backpack. Um, oh, Lord Dracus. So that's a mutate uh, of uh, water or fire. Um, so in, um, like ocean or mountain. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I quite like that. It's weird looking though, isn't it? Archie Pelegor. Um, so that is this is one of those uh, we built our city on the back of a um, sea creature whoops kind of deals uh, whenever this creature mutates tap up to X target creature where X is the number of times the creature is mutated for those creatures don't untap during their controller's next untap step so that's kind of a nice blocking card I quite like that so I'm going to stick that in the neighbor keep pile oh I like the look of this um, this planes here Deadly Rock. Uh, this is an instant. Again, it's got that same symbol on it. There you go. Um, if you control a commander, you may ca cast a spell without paying its mana cost. Exile target creature. Mm, maybe I'll put that in because of its synergy. Wow. Emergent Ultimatum. Look at these giant, like, forest cows? I'm going to go with. Um, search library for up to three multicolored cards with different names and exile them. The opponent chooses one of those cards, shuffle the cards into your library. You may cast, uh, shuffle that card into the library, you may cast the other cards without paying the mana cost. Exile Emergent Ultimatum. That's a really expensive card, though, right? Why is that so good? Can anyone. The Lord Guy would work nicely with Perfect Pet. Sorry, I'll just. Do you mean which Lord guy? <laughs> so there's perfect pet. So I've just seen the hide hiders just made a comment there that we've got some synergy between Dorat, the perfect pet, and the Lord guy. Um, now it depends who the Lord guy. Do you mean ah? Uh, do you mean Lord Dracus here? This guy. Is this is this good synergy? These guys. Are they are they best friends? So can you I'm I'm not sure why they would work well together other than they have um similar costs, right? Quite unremarkable there is uh helping me out with emergent automated. See I'm learning so much. I'm learning learning so much. Um, so Lord Dracus, so uh, Lord Dracus and Dora, how do they, how do those guys work really well together, Hyder? I think it's interesting because I mean, these guys don't look like they're friends, I must say. these down here as a, uh, a side piece for the moment. Um, 
And the way that immersion automation works is that it's very expensive, but actually this costs, uh, because of what goes back in the library and all that sort of stuff, um, this costs less, is my understanding. Ooh, I found a really, this one looks nice. I like looking at this one a lot. Ah, uh, okay, so the, the law and Dorat synergy is that law would be bouncing spells. Oh, back into your hand. Of course, sorry. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put one one counter on spy. So you could um, be mutating this, getting cards back into your hand that when you cast them would buff this. I get you. Okay, I'm going to put these in a pile together then because I think that's a good basis for a deck, isn't it? Uh, of like growing things in a weird way. Um, okay, here's the one I was very excited just to see there. I think this is maybe one of my favorite bits of art on these things. This guy, Mythos of Mythori. Destroy target non land permanent if that creature, uh, creature or, uh, if a creature or um, forest or, is that a plane was spent to cast a spell? If it's a creature, or if it did ever spend, cast a spell. Hmm. Okay. I think it's a good one. Let's stick that in our good to keep pile. We've seen this cloud piercer before. Uh, pouncing shore shark. So this is um. I can't. I can't remember what it was called, and maybe someone in the chat can help me here. I'm trying to remember the name of a TV show from the 90s or early 2000s, um, and it wasn't Biker Mice from Mars. It was these sharks that were maybe also in a biker gang. Was it Street Sharks or something like that? I'm trying to remember. I think this pouncing shark is basically that. Is that what we've got here? Anyway, oh, you know, oh, what is it? It's not the Biker Mice from Mars, but I think they were probably like a crossover series or something like that. It is Street Sharks, okay, cool. Which now just sounds like a, um, Street Sharks was a thing. Okay, yeah, good, we have we have confirmation of Street Sharks. We have, con we've confirmed, we've confirmed the Street Shark. Uh, here we are. Um, well, I suppose this is the point is it's actually a beach shark because it's a shore, a shore shark. Uh, <laughs> uh, and can it be redeemed? That's the question. Um, oh, nice, nice looking land there. Not shiny, just just nice to look at. What do you think of the art direction on these other these ones that have this, um, which I I would just describe as comic style or graphic novel style. Wow. Okay. Ghidorah, king of the cosmos. Look, he's shiny. He's mythic rare. He's full, full, um, full panel color here. I think this looks cool. This like this guy looks cool. So okay. So he's got he's a mutating one. Uh, he's got flying. He's got trample. He's a six six. Uh, he needs like most mana <laughs> types, I guess. Uh, whenever this creature mutates, exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land permanent card. Put that card into the battlefield or your hand. Now, certain people in the chat have been saying, "Good pull that." When I've been uh, when I found like nice looking ones, is this a good pull? I think this is a good pull. Okay, <laughs> yeah, just, uh, I think bidding has started in the chat. Uh, can I? <laughs> Excellent, right. Uh, apparently this card's worth money, so what, what I'll do is obviously I, I will play it without putting it on the sleeve. I hope everyone's okay with that. Um, right, I'll just stick that one down there. Uh, Cavern Whisperer. It's an insane pool. Oh, we've gone up, for, uh, gone up from a great pool to... I have pulled, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and uh, I've pulled Ghidorah, King of the Cosmos. That's great. Okay, so we'll put a deck around this at some point then. I think that would be quite interesting to uh, to look at. Um, 
what I need though is I, I really need someone uh, to, to come join me in one of these streams as like a deck doctor, um, and we can uh, <laughs> and we can work that out. Yeah, cool. Okay, we'll make a deck around that as well because that, that's obviously a nice one to um, to focus on. Um, Cavern Whisperer, Just nice art, nice and shiny. And <laughs> as we sometimes do with these packs, uh, we just get shark, <laughs> flying shark. It's fine. <laughs> uh, okay, cool, lovely. So that is that is all the uh, I'm going to say normal normal cards that we'll be looking at um, today. Um, thank you for that. I'll just power these up as well, and we're going to look at the last box of stuff. Last box of stuff. And then later I'll be carefully putting all the rare ones. Um, uh, Hydra 75 is the deck doctor. He might end up being the deck doctor. That's true. Um, uh, we'll see. Uh, so we've got this, a commander deck. I've never played commander. Um, oh, my understanding is that you just create, you have a, 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 a sort of like a, um, a deck of almost any kind of card, not non-standard cards included. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you were... Uh, uh, you, the, the commander has like special powers and like cycle through from your graveyard uh, differently to other cards, stuff like that. Um, it's what the card, it's what the deck's kind of built around. So let's get them out and we'll talk about what we've got in this box. First of all, most importantly, we have this excellent oversized foil of our commander. This is a legendary creature called uh, or Timmy, the ever playful. Um, now the thing is, with these decks, you know what's in them, so we're just going to have a very quick look at it. Um, so fan, fans of Magic will, will have already seen the deck list for Commander decks, because they, I believe they are pre-built. Um, but what does he do? So this is like the linchpin of our entire deck, our entire Commander deck. So Otrimi, the ever-playful. He's a legendary creature. He's a nightmare beast. Uh, he's having a cheeky look at us um, through some sort of rock hole. Um, so he's got Trample, and wherever this creature deals combat damage to a player, return target creature card with Mutate from your graveyard to your hand. So that sounds great. So that sounds like you're going to endlessly be mutating creatures. Okay. Um, this seems like a nice fit for um, uh, some of the other stuff we've seen. Cool. So here's the box. We are looking at some advanced, uh, enhanced evolution rules there. Um, we'll come to that later. Oh, we have a nice health counter here. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you if this is a rare one. I think this might be, might be standard. Um, <laughs> but I will put it with the other ones. Okay. Oh, shall we look at these? Shall we look at these ones at the bottom first? No, we won't. We'll look at the other ones. We'll just have a very quick flick through these. Okay, here he is. Here's the real card. Now I assume these are, might go in um, rarity order. So um, we may just <laughs> bash through these very quickly. Exara the Exemplary. Legendary creature, Nightmare Hydra. Death Touch, add two mana, uh, add two mana of any one color. Whenever you cast a spell with X in its mana cost, create zero, zero green Hydra. Creature token and then put uh, X one one counters on it. Oh, okay. So it's like a zero zero creature that's been buffed. So obviously, if it kind of got um, its buffs removed, it would uh, die immediately. Okay, that's cool. So Zer, ruthless stalker, legendary creature, human warrior, partner with Akuma, stalking shadows. Uh, okay, yes, yeah, so you can search through the deck to find the card that matches this because it's a partner card. Seems cool. Here is that stalking shadow we just talked about. It's a werewolf, <laughs> um, <laughs> which feels like I just don't know how to say werewolf. So, um, it's my, which is one of my, you know, obviously one of my favourite games that um, Bezier Games is, uh, folk games that Bezier Games has turned into its own uh, bit of magic called uh, werewolf. <laughs> uh, very good. Um, so, can't be blocked, and when they leave the battlefield deals X damage to target player and you gain X life but X is its power so I guess you could um, make this stronger 
through the use of this other card, the Scissors card, uh, here. Uh, whenever a creature control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1 1 counter on that creature. So once it's doing damage to the opponent, which it will because it can't be blocked, uh, this card will start building up and eventually, when it does die, uh, it's going to do damage to everyone. Okay. Uh, so we've got some souvenir snatchers here Tide of Barracuda, Boneyard, Midichondrax. Uh, it's equal to the number of other creatures in your graveyard. Actually, I like that a lot. I like that card. <laughs> Deadly Robic. It's an, he's putting an amusing face there. Anyway. Dredge the Mire, Mind Leecher. Oh, that's quite nice. That's quite a nice mutation -y one. Yes, this looks good. Okay, I've, we've seen if we're going to see a few of these that we've seen already. So I'm just going to very quickly pass through it like this. Plant Hydra, I like that. Genesis Hydra. Vastwood Hydra. See, I like this Hydra deck as a theme. Vorapede. Undying. When this creature dies, if it had no plus one counters, it returns it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a 1 1 counter on it. That's very good. Ooh. What's this card? Okay, we've found something weird that I don't understand. Hyder's going to have to come out of the retirement. Quick, get the deck doctor. Um, find finality. So this is two cards on one printed on one sheet. Any ideas? How, do, how on earth does this work? Return two target creatures cards from your graveyard to your hand. Is this like just an either or effect, but it's actually presented as two different cards in one card? It's weird, isn't it? I've not seen that before. Mate, it's probably very not weird, something very normal uh, for you all. Uh, and it's just me that doesn't understand it. Uh, oh, okay, we've got an, here's your legendary planeswalker for this deck. Nice mixed minions in here. Very nice looking stuff. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna learn how to play Commander, and then, and then uh, we'll come back to this at some point. I do have a few um, other uh, a, a little pack of cards over here, and I think they're just I think it might just be a pack of token creatures, but we'll have a look at what's in there anyway. Just so you've got the full um, ah. So with that split spell, you can play one or both spells. I'm pretty sure. So that's just a. So really, the value there is the fact that it's on one card. So you only spent one draw for it. Oh, this is funny. Um, how many Hydras do you think this deck needs? We saw a few already. How about this many? I suppose it's one per head, really. Cool. Right, so that is our lot. Shall we have a look? Shall I just have a little uh, display of some of my favorites that I've seen today? Uh, we've got this one here, which is a simulacrum. Uh, we have where did that very nice looking one go? Uh, we have the Lord Dracus here. We like the look of that one. That's cool. We decided that there would be good synergy with Dorat, the perfect pet here. Um, I just like the Cave Whisperer. I think it's just a good card, good looking card. But it's not not that rare. Nicholas of Neherothy, that is one I just like the art of. Um, Deadly Rollick, we've seen that already elsewhere. Archipelago, we've seen that. Uh, and then this is, I think, our biggest pull of the, the, whole, uh, the whole shebang. Cool. So, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, I will just switch to one where you can see the full sweatiness of me. Uh, there we go. All right. Uh, thank you very much for joining me today. Uh, I'm Chris Eggett. I'm the editor of Tabletop Game Magazine. Um, nice for everyone to be in the chat and uh, to be uh, 
uh, working through all these decks. Um, apologies for not knowing everything, uh, but we will soon know everything, I'm sure. Uh, this came out today. I don't know if you've seen this. This is very good, uh, and you should probably go buy it. Uh, you can get it from our website, which is tabletopgaming.co.uk. Um, if you're not following already, because you're not s s logged in or anything like that, um, you could do that. It would really help us um, uh, pick up a few... Um, uh, will help us build the community really is actually what, what it's about um and then you know eventually we'll be uh we're doing bigger streams and, and and more interesting stuff as we get more proficient at it so thank you very much and uh make sure you visit us um, on all the websites thanks <laughs>